My name is Caitlin Pyle and I was a freelance proofreader eight years ago. I started a blog in November of 2014 called proofreadanywhere.com and I taught people how to start freelance proofreading businesses from home. And truly when I started that blog, I thought this will last six months because I was used to myself not doing what it took to make things anything, you know, just getting stuck and giving up, you know, what most people are familiar with these days. But the blog took off and it became really successful, making millions of dollars a year. Certainly not what I expected as a freelancer earning forty-five to fifty thousand dollars a year. And I thought that's all I was ever gonna be. I thought that I was just gonna be a proofreader forever. Inspiration behind Proofread Anywhere was wanting to share a way to make money from home so you didn't have to depend on a job. I had gotten fired from a job in 2011 and I knew that I never wanted to put myself in that situation again where somebody could just cut off my income at the drop of a hat for any reason that they wanted to. I didn't want to give anyone else that kind of control over my income ever again. I started getting published in various media outlets and people were coming to me and saying, I didn't know that you could do this. And I started to realize that just because I knew something didn't mean that everybody else knew it. And I was getting all this traffic from these sources that I had been published in and people were genuinely interested in it. And then people were buying my products and having success with it. And I was like, this is a real thing, you know? I knew that it was something special when there was a community forming around it. Seeing that turn into a way that other people were also able to start their own businesses and seeing how it also gave them an entry point into entrepreneurship in the way that it did me was really inspiring. So I started my business in late 2014 and I started thinking, well, am I gonna do this forever? And the reality is, when you start a business, you're either gonna close it or you're gonna sell it eventually. 2020, I brought on a CEO. The CEO started packaging up the business and optimizing things. And it was great for me because he was able to look at things through a non-emotional lens. I had very much become attached to my audience, very much become attached to the business itself. And that's when it started to seem more realistic to sell it. Markets were changing, I was changing. Being able to sell it as an asset and selling it with the audience in a niche that it, the work at home niche, especially after 2020 happened, after COVID happened. I had a book called Work at Home come out in 2019. It was just ripe. It was actually my CEO who found FE International and we had interviewed with them before and it wasn't just, it wasn't the right time for me at that time, but six months to a year later, it was the right time for everybody and just everything lined up, the stars aligned and we met with Ishmael and we really felt their energy come through and the time that we spent on the phone with them interviewing to see if it was a good fit. What was important to me in selling my business was that my legacy would live on and that whoever took it over was well qualified and had integrity to take my vision and expand upon it, investing into what I had created and making it something bigger, leaving it better than the way they found it. When Effie connected me to a buyer that had incredible integrity that I felt comfortable with handing the reins over to them to continue my vision for the company, it became a no brainer and Effie made it easy. And that's what it's all about, is for it to not feel like a headache, for it to not feel like a burden, for it to feel like an opportunity, because that's essentially what it is. And Effie never let us forget that. And even when it got tough, which it can always be tough, you know, it's, it's, it's really a mindset thing. The process I feel like was easy, but it's often ourselves that get in the way. And Effie was supportive every step of the way. If I were to do anything differently, it would be to not involve family and to get out of my own way a little bit sooner. So recognize my own 
way of inserting obstacles, so my own limiting mindsets, my own thought patterns of wanting to control things, being able to let go and let it flow more instead of expecting everything to be perfect before I go to the next level or feeling like I need to have X number of dollars before I invest in myself. You need to be a good steward with your resources and eventually I did that and it always comes back to you, but if I could go back and do it sooner, I would. I'm actually doubling down on coaching and working with other entrepreneurs, specifically high achieving women, women who have battled imposter syndrome, women who are wanting to scale their business, wanting to get out of their own way, reprogramming their minds with empowering thoughts over the limiting thoughts and creating a new reality based on that.